Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and my very last colour and <coughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and my very last culinary experiment uh, with deliciously Ella's recipes. I've liked pretty much 90% of the recipes and I think it's a really really great book and I will definitely um, keep keep using a lot of the things I've learned here and some of the ingredients that I have bought will now be staples in my cupboard. The very last recipe is special because it's apple and blackberry crumble and blackberries are my favourite fruit and in honour of my favourite fruit on the very last recipe in this tiny series of cookery videos I've put on a black dress, black ring, black choker, black bracelet and I've worn the nearest shade of lipstick I could get to Blackberry. I always wanted to be a goth. Anyway, I'm sticking to the quantities in this recipe because you can never have enough dessert. So even though I thought the quantities in lots of Ella's recipes were a bit excessive and I had trouble both cooking and preparing such huge amounts, um, well, you can even freeze crumble. So first of all, we have one mug of almonds which have to be blitzed in a food processor to make almond f flour but I just bought ground almonds because I don't have a food processor we have one and a half mugs of um, oats three heaped tablespoons of coconut oil which I put in this bowl a third of a mug of maple syrup I'll pour that in as we go two teaspoons of ground cinnamon which is here six red apples, two mugs of blackberries, tablespoon of maple syrup, and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, which I'll add later. So you start by adding the ground almonds to a mixing bowl. I put the cinnamon, the ground cinnamon, the coconut oil, and half a mug of maple syrup in the saucepan, and it's heating up. And here we've got our oats and ground almonds. And when this oily mixture in the saucepan is is properly warmed through and mixed together. Then we pour our oily mixture over the oats and almonds and we have to stir it so that the dry mixture is completely coated. It's beginning to look a bit like a flapjack mixture at the moment. And it smells... Oh, mm. It smells kind of toasted and rich and autumnal and mm, got an itchy nose. Now I chopped up the apples. I don't believe in, in peeling fruit and vegetables if I can help it because a lot of the goodness is in the, the skin. It remains to be seen whether not peeling these apples will make the crumble not so nice. I think possibly to lots of people but I hate peeling things and also I like the, the skin and in this case it's, it's very pretty. Look at the red. Now, these apples have to be added to this saucepan here in which I put the blackberries. Don't, sorry, the, cap, the phone is not very good at changing exposure to show you things. The blackberries, another tablespoon of maple syrup and another teaspoon of cinnamon and then you just put a tiny bit of boiling water on the bottom of the saucepan just enough to cover it then you add your apples it looks wonderful earthy the cinnamon has made the apples look all dirty as if they've come from the earth well I know apples don't come from the earth but along with the blackberries let me see if I can show you better isn't that lovely and the cinnamon. Oh. The apples and blackberries have been stewing for about 10 minutes. They're nice and soft. The colour is absolutely beautiful. And then we put our topping on. I imagine uh, as evenly as possible, although it's kind of sinking in places. There's probably a knack to this, which I don't know. 
Maybe I should have actually manually kind of moulded it into layers. Uh, I mean, kind of planes, flat. Uh, maybe I could do that now. I'll try. It's gooey enough, so I'm trying to kind of make it into a into a layer. So yes, if I were you, I would advise doing that. Otherwise, it kind of sinks down through the stewed fruit. Shame I didn't do that from the beginning, but there we go. Just try and cover it all. I guess it's all going to fall apart afterwards anyway. When I serve it out. Okay, and probably the, the fruit will bubble up through through the cracks anyway and it all gets to the same place in the end I'm sorry about this I should have don't apologize don't explain okay so basically we have to put this in an oven which is heated to 180 degrees fan or 200 degrees conventional oven I should have told you to heat the oven earlier but that's what we have to do we bake for 25 to 30 minutes okay so now it's time to take the crumble out of the oven. Whoa, the heat. <clears throat> the heat, the heat, the heat. My God, that is maybe a tiny bit overdone. Maybe my oven is quite fierce. Make it glam in a trifle dish and holy in a rustic bowl. And also, I'm really happy with this little idea. Excuse the limes, they're from a recipe earlier. Um, I had an empty jar, an empty jam jar, and I found a piece of ribbon with blackberries around it, blackberries and chickens. So I put that as a little kind of banner, and then I put around the top, and then I put all the blackberry and apple down here, and as tidily as I could, I put the crumble on top. And what a lovely little snack that would be, or even for a picnic, you could put the lid on and take it with you. And now for the test. By the way, leaving the skins on the apples I think worked fine. They turned a kind of golden colour in the oven, and, um, well, at least to look at, it, it looks quite nice. Now, I've got a piece of apple with skin on, so I'll be able to tell you. Mmm. Tastes a bit of yogurt. Mm. It's as good, if not better, than normal crumble. Because one of the things I hate about normal crumble is it goes kind of gooey. There's no gooeyness here. It's just texturized crunch. I'm really, really impressed. This is an absolutely amazing recipe. Nothing bad in it at all, unless you count the sugars, which are all natural. And mm, it goes particularly well with Greek yogurt, something I'll definitely be doing again. Um, I just hope you found it fun, mildly educational, not that any of this is due to me, but all credit should go to Ella Woodward. And interestingly enough, she had um, an illness which is sort of similar to the illness I had. She had something called P.O. Potts Syndrome. I can't quite remember how to say it. Um, and it's very misunderstood, not really, people don't really understand how to get better from it or what causes it and I'll talk more in another video um, about these type of syndromes and sort of nebulous illnesses which can be incredibly debilitating. Um, I had ME or chronic fatigue syndrome in my 20s and funnily enough cooking as I said I mentioned in another video was one of the ways that I began to get slightly better and it's interesting because cooking is very absorbing 
but it's not cerebral, so you, you, your mind is completely occupied. You don't have time to worry about illness or even notice illness sometimes. If the illness is like these type of illnesses, which I believe and are going to again are triggered by emotional and um, stress responses that are ingrained but are quite subconscious. And cookery was a practical thing, it was absorbing and it was healthy because I didn't have to use my mind. Often when we use our minds too much, um, <clears throat> if our thoughts tend to be negative, they can um, take us into quite a dark place. So I was interested to learn how Ella recovered, apparently completely, from her illness. She attributes it to eating food with a high nutritional content and um, the recipes in her book and her discovering a completely new way of eating. But as I will touch upon in another video, I believe it's for a slightly different reason that people do get over such syndromes and illnesses. In any case, thanks for watching, it's been really good fun and I'll see you soon.